Welcome back to another video and today we're gonna make sure that our character is actually facing some objects in the world and as you will see the other characters are gonna look at us and we're gonna look at them and we can apply this logic to basically any actor in the level. So let's bring the logic from the previous video into the actual game world itself. So the first thing let's head into our control rig for just a little bit because we are going to set up some values over here and then we're gonna populate those values from outside from the animation blueprint. So previously we created this part right here with these five aim nodes to make our character basically move around and follow, follow the control like so. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna, instead of using a control, we're gonna first set a location for the control and we actually need a couple of variables and I don't have my variables panel so window uh, my blueprint and let's dock it over here there we go so let's create a new variable uh, let's call this one look at and that's gonna be a boolean and then we're gonna have another one which is gonna be the look at location which is going to be a vector value like so. Now we're gonna go ahead and select this eye icon to make it an open eye. So now those variables are gonna be available to, uh, to be provided from the outside. So basically from our animation blueprint. Now let's make some adjustments over here. So what I'm gonna do actually is for now, I'm gonna disconnect the B route. And instead I'm gonna do a branch and I'm going to use my look at as a condition. So if we have to look at something only then we're going to go ahead and apply some changes. So only on the true route. Now, first thing that I want to do is I actually want to set up the location. So for this, we're going to grab our look at location. We're going to get the value, but this is going to be a world value. So we're going to go ahead and do from world. And this is going to convert this from the world to the local space. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our head control and we're going to set its translation. So only on the true route. If we do need to look at something, we're going to go ahead and change the location to this newly populated value. And then we can go ahead and use our aim nodes like so. Right, so only if the values are true if we can actually look at something only then we make the adjustment okay so you're going to see that now he is going to be back to normal he is not going to follow anything because the default value is going to be false and that is actually exactly what we want we don't want it to be true okay good now since we expose these values we can actually go ahead and populate those so we can forget about our control rig no more controller rig for this video so let's go not in the control rig, but let's go to our character. Let's locate our character's animation blueprint class. Let's go inside of that one. And there we go. We are over here. So let's go to our animation graph. Let's select our control rig. And now we have these variables available, as you can see. So we want to input something. We don't want to grab the information from the control rig. We want to feed it into the control rig. So under the input section, we're going to check these to be use pin like so. So now we can actually provide some values over here. So if we would check this to be true, compile, you can see the character is going to move his head inside of him somewhere oddly because he's trying to look at the zero zero position because that's the coordinates we provided. So if we would do something like 160 in the Z, uh okay we can't do that okay let's just promote to a variable look at location and if we would change the default value to compile to 160 y 160z it's going to look something like this because it's somewhere roughly inside of this area a little bit lower than the character okay i'm going to bring this back to zeros so you're going to see how you you are, you are seeing how this technically should work now we're also going to promote the look at to a variable as well, like so. And unfortunately the default value got changed to true because this was checked. So make sure that this guy is false and that the coordinates are zeros as well. So now he's going to be back to normal unless we tell him to change something. Okay, so that's for uh, this uh, inputs for the control rig. Now let's go to the event graph and let's make some adjustments over here. So. 
the first thing that we want to do is I'm actually going to do a sequence because I'm going to run the default tasks that we have over here and then I'm going to run some extra tasks over here and I'm going to be using a multi sphere trace for objects we're going to trace specific objects so that we would eliminate all the unnecessary collisions we're going to be only focusing on one type of an object and that is going to be a specific component now we do need to provide an object type so we could make this array but the problem is over here we are very limited to what we can actually pick we can pick all the static all the pawns all the physics bodies all that stuff uh, but not in all cases that could be enough. Maybe if we only want to look at the characters, we could use pawns. Uh, but we might want to look at some other objects as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my own object class. So real quick, let's go into the project settings. And let's locate the collision. And here we have the object channels. Let's add a new channel. I'm going to call this look at me. Uh, let's ignore by default so everybody would ignore it so there's no collisions happening so we're gonna accept and close it off good so now under this drop down we can actually select uh, wait we need to compile first probably yeah and then we can select look at me now the next thing is we need start and end positions so we can go ahead and try get pawn owner so that's basically this character who owns this uh, animation blueprint and from this we can get actor location and so we're going to be doing a sphere around our character so we're going to use that for the start and for the end positions and let's set up some radius and i'm going to set mine to something like 350. Uh, you can experiment with that basically that the bigger the radius the further uh, the character already starts to interact visually with with the with this object so it's quicker since the character starts looking at it uh, but I think 350 is a pretty good value. It kind of could be even a little bit maybe smaller, but 350 seems to do the trick just fine. Now, the next thing is let's do an if branch check from the collision so that we know that we actually have hit something because if we haven't hit anything, we want to set our look at to be false. So we don't look at unnecessary objects, right? Okay, that's good. The next thing is we actually need to go ahead and l use these objects to know at which which object we want to use at which uh, which object we want to look at. So what I'm actually going to do is let's first let's do a loop for each for each loop, and then let's just do break, hit result, and I'm actually going to select both of these nodes, right click them, and collapse to a function. And let's call this where to look at. And we're going to do all of our calculations inside of this function. So we don't have a lot of things in the event graph, but better in the functions. So they take less space for us on the screen. Okay, so we have our where to look at. Now we're going to need a couple of outputs. So we can go ahead, select the function, create an output. Uh, let's call this, uh, yeah, let's just call this look at boolean. And then another value would be the component. So the component at which we want to look at. And for this, we're going to need, I'm going to use a scene component for this. So any component would do the trick as long as we set a correct uh, object channel for this. And once we have basically done all the calculations, we can go ahead, set our look at variable. So if we will find something, this is going to return true. If not, it's going to return as false. But just in case, we still need to do an if branch check to make sure this is true. Because only if this is true, and only then we can go ahead and from the component, we can get uh, location get world location because if this is going to be false this is going to give us an error because there's going to be no such component found right so we want to make sure that we have a branch so that we would look for the position only if the object has been found and then on the true route we can set our look at location boom good like this and that's pretty much all that we're going to have in the uh, event graph for now well at least for this video so one last thing that's left for us to do is to set up this where to look at function. So let's dive into the function. We have a big mess over here, as we can see. Now from the completion, we're going to go return. 
and we're going to actually promote both of these outputs uh, to a local variables. So we're going to call this L look at, and we're going to have a L component like this. Good. And so let's do some calculations. Now this part might be a little bit, I mean, a little bit complicated in a way, but not really. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, we want to check the rotation because if our character right now our character can basically flip his head 180 degrees and look completely behind him which is unnatural and we don't want to do that so we're going to do some calculations to make sure that the head rotation is in range float right so this is going to be our condition so we can actually do an if on this so that's going to be from the loop's body. We're going to do an if to make sure that the rotation is within a specific range. And then if it is, we can set up our local variable. So our local component and our local look at. Our local look at in this case is going to be true. And the component is going to be from the hit result, the hit component itself like this. So now let's go ahead and set up the math. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to calculate the rotation between the two objects, between uh, the character and the object that we are looking at. So what we're going to do is from the hit component, we're going to get the location. So get world location of this object. And then also we need to get the character's position. So we're going to do try get pawn owner. And we're going to get its location, get actor location. Now from here, we can use a node called find look at rotation. And this is basically going to return us the rotation in the world between these two objects. So the start is our own character, and then the target is the object that we are looking at. Now to get the actual proper degrees and angles and all that stuff, what we wanna do is we wanna do a delta rotator, and we wanna use this uh, look at rotation as a B route, and for the A route, we're going to use our character's rotation. So from the pawn owner, we're going to get rotation, get actor rotation, and that is going to be our A route. And now this is going to give us a proper some proper value that we can actually understand and work with, which is the angle uh, where the other object is based on our character. So we can actually right-click the return value. And for this, all that we care about is the Z rotation. So left and right, so that we wouldn't be able to look behind us. So we're going to grab this value and we're going to plug this into in range. And now we want to make sure that, well, uh, our character's head doesn't rotate behind him. So it doesn't go above, let's say, minus 80 degrees and positive 80 degrees. And that should do the trick. Now you can experiment with these values. Don't go above 90. Otherwise the character's head is going to start turning backwards slowly. Uh, so keep in mind with that. But that's pretty much it for the math and for the functions. Now the last thing left for us to do is actually assign the object types. So we have our object types, the look at me uh, channels. And nobody really has this channel at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the third person character for this. I'm going to set up a bunch of characters in the level, but you can obviously do this for any other objects as well. So I'm going to add a new component. Since we use scene component, we could use any. In this case, I'm going to use a sphere collision like this. And I'm going to move it to a location where the character should actually be looking at. Because if we're going to store it somewhere around here, he's going to be looking at the feet. But we want them to look at each other's faces like this. So we're going to move this object over here, roughly where the head is. And then we can scroll down until we find the collisions. Let's open up the preset. And we can see that the object type is world dynamic. So instead of using a preset, we're going to use a custom and we're going to make sure that the object type is getting set to look at me. Now you can do this for any object. And as soon as you will add this thing, it should work just fine. So let's add a bunch of characters into the level. So let's go ahead and let's start adding those. So we're going to have a guy over here, over here, here, and here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to have a couple of people facing the other way around as well like this two three so let's hit play and let's have a look so now once we move into the area 
you can see that our character is starting to face that character and that character is facing towards us. And once we reach a specific rotation that is not within the angle, he's going to start to face away. So you can see that guy is looking at us. That guy is looking at us. So everybody is starting to try and look at us. And we can apply, like I said, this to basically any actors in the world. And that's going to be it for this episode. So now our character is following along. As you can see, he's going to look at this guy as well. That guy is not going to look at us because we are behind him. So if you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't already, leave any suggestions down in the comment section. And I see you in the next one.